up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel I am gold pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport courtesy of younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown Maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so I'm in this one today because there's actually a couple new trim levels for the 2022 Outlander Sport of course you got the rally inspired four-wheel drive system which is amazing in itself and America's best warranty as well being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain and you actually get a double powertrain warranty at Younger Mitsubishi in case you were interested meaning 20 years 200,000 miles on that powertrain that is nuts but anyways in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so there are several trim levels for the 2022 Outlander Sport. First one being the two liter S starting at 21,445, two liter ES for 23,445, two liter LE for 24,395, two liter SE, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $25,695. Then there is a new trim being the SE Special Edition for $25,195, 2.4 liter GT for $28,045, and lastly the GT Special Edition, also a new trim level for this year starting at $27,545. And so for all of these trim levels with the exception of the S that was pricing for the front wheel drive, there is that all wheel control available. If you wanted that, simply add $1,550 then to any of those prices. So as you can probably tell though by the trim levels, there's two different engine configurations that are available. First one, being the one that we have today, is going to belong to all trim levels but the GT trims, and that is going to be a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 148 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 145 pound feet of torque, coming in at 4,200 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.7 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city, 27 highway for the front wheel drive, 20 three city 26 on the highway for the four-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration belonging to the GT trim levels that one is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder putting out 168 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 167 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4100 rpm power sent to all four wheels only that one only comes with all-wheel control which is a good thing power sent to the ground through a CVT 0 to 60 approximately eight seconds flat with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 25 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so, but now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test in our two liter. And let's see how quickly we can get the new 2022 Outlander Sport here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right, it's not the quickest thing in the world, if I'm being honest, but it does have a little bit of pep at lower speeds. I will say that, like, uh, probably because it's not a turbocharged engine, it's instant acceleration when you're going maybe under 10 miles per hour. So if you want to make quick city street kind of moves, I guess this thing is perfect for that. But as far as acceleration goes, zero to 60 in 8.7 seconds is definitely not the quickest thing in the world. But it'll get the job done but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.9 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes that is going to come in at 118 feet which is plenty respectable and honestly as far as the braking feel goes it's great honestly it's perfect it's a little bit on the firmer side which i personally appreciate because it instantly brings you to that stop there's no dead spots in the braking it's not a soft braking feel which you typically find in SUVs which makes it a lot more unenjoyable to drive so braking is excellent in the Outlander Sport I'll say that then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been fine it's pretty much as I expected so definitely no issues in my short test drive here today at least as far as steering feel goes again it's probably weighted a little bit on the heavier side which I like but really it's just right in many SUVs you're gonna find a much looser steering feel than what I'm currently getting here in the Outlander Sport. So 
Honestly, Mitsubishi did a really good job with the steering feel. It's definitely a little bit on the heavier side, which I like. Now, as far as cabin noise goes, I'm going a little bit over 50 miles per hour right now. It is a little bit noisier than most other SUVs in its class, but it's not bad. Definitely something that wouldn't bother me, but it's not as a serene cabin as some of the other competitors out there. I'll just put it that way. The touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so definitely not going to have any issues there, but here's one better. You actually get rain-sensing windshield wipers on every single trim level of the outlet. Outlander Sport, even the S trim level, meaning whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, kind of like automatic headlights. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about, and it gets better with the exterior. So having now got all of that out of the way, the performance segment, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a spot here, and let's take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport finished in Labrador Black Pearl. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name, but let's go ahead and start up front because like I said, this one gets a heck of a lot better on the exterior. Here's why, I'm just gonna start out with it. Full LED headlights coming standard on every single trim level. Now, typically, a lot of times you'll find halogens still these days, but typically you're gonna find low beam LEDs, high beam halogens. But for this one, even starting at 21,000, you get full LED headlights, meaning both low beam and high beam. So that's a wonderful thing. And really quite amazing considering the price point of the Outlander Sport. LED fog lights coming with the ES trim level and up. Automatic feature, of course, coming standard across the board, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for there but also automatic high beams coming standard for all trim levels as well so the value really continues here with these leds silver trim of course you're going to find some of that surrounding the lighting configurations and also some silver trim accenting on the front grill there as well but overall again the leds is what got me here on the outlander sport but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side and so but now since we are around to the side of the outlander sport roof rails are available though we don't have them on our particular configuration black window surrounds do come standard across the board rear privacy glass also coming standard across the board as well you will find some chrome front fender accents if you were to go with the se trim level and up therefore that is why we do have them here today with us body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard and you will get integrated turn signals if you were to go with the se trim level and up that's what you guys are currently looking at the side mirrors are actually heated for all trim levels across the board as well which is a pretty good thing because we do have snow all over the place here in hagerstown maryland right now but then take a look down to the wheel configuration 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the s trim level 18 inch two-tone alloys with the es and the se the special edition trims and the gt so pretty much all the trims almost but 18 inch black painted alloys then for the le trim level but pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the outlander sport all right so now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin antenna there all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper but again with the leds LED LED taillights coming standard for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love it, but because you still don't get that on all vehicles out there. So I want to emphasize that. You do have trim level badging found on the uh, the right portion of that trunk there in case you're wandering onto a Mitsubishi lot and you were wondering what trim level you're actually looking at. And just below it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Outlander Sport, did want to mention it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 21.7 cubic feet behind that second row. If that is not enough space, you can, of course, fold those rear seats down, bumping that up to 49.5 cubic feet then. Can find some cargo lighting within that cargo area. There's actually a cargo cover that comes standard with this one. Cargo tie-down anchors as well. And there's also several grocery bag hooks that have, can double that as a couple of hooks to actually set up some cargo nets. We actually have two cargo nets back there, which is pretty cool to find. You also have a little bit of a indented storage on both the left and the right hand side in the back. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which is what you can find under there, which I personally prefer as opposed to the fix of flat. So that's what you got there. Then make our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 36.3 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back seats there. There is a rear 
rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard for every single trim level across the board you gotta love that if you were to go with the le trim level and up you will actually get dual rear usb charging ports which i absolutely love seeing as well however no rear ventilation that i could at least see in clear sight so i didn't want to mention that as well but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the s E, S, and L, E, you will find a power driver's seat with the GT trim levels, leather seating for the GT. However, if you were to go with the S, E trim level, you're actually going to get a leatherette suede combination like we have today, which I personally love. That's my favorite seating configuration still to this date. So I'm definitely digging it. If you were to go with the L, E trim level and up, you're actually going to get heated front seats. Those buttons are located just in front of the shifter. So that's definitely nice as well. And overall, seats were plenty comfortable. And like I said, my favorite seating configuration has always been the leather or leatherette and suede combination so big fan of that then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels and it will be leather wrapped for the le trim level and up then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your mitsubishi logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock and it is all keyless entry with a push button start if you go with the S E trim level and up like we have today. Otherwise, it is that traditional turnkey start. So, anyways, all I am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there. And so, once started up, of course, you will find the tachometer on the left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a digital display front and center giving you your basics like trip A, trip B, outside temperature, fuel information, of course, engine temp, and pretty much everything you could possibly need up on that digital portion there. Then making our way to overall interior quality, there is an auto dimming rear view mirror coming standard for all trim levels across the board. I love that. You don't always get that for all trim levels and other manufacturers out there, so that's a good thing. GT trims are actually going to give you home leg controls on that auto dimming rear view mirror as well automatic climate control coming standard for all trim levels as well you gotta love that just in front of the shifter you have a little bit of rubberized storage probably to store your cell phone there you have dual usb charging ports behind the shifter you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest is actually a decent amount of storage more than i expected there is a 12 volt power outlet in there as well but overall it's pretty much kind of on the to the point kind of aspect when it comes to interior quality it's kind of on the basic side but it'll certainly get the job done but then making our way to the infotainment screen you will find a seven inch infotainment screen for the s and es trims and then an eight inch screen for the le trim level and up and that is currently what you're looking at right now of course bluetooth and audio streaming come standard on all trim levels but android auto apple carplay only comes with that eight inch screen so if you go with the s or the es you're not going to get android auto apple carplay so we did want to emphasize Besides that but in addition to that of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound systems on this one you will find four speakers for the s es and le trims and then a six speaker sound system for all of the other trim levels essentially so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one the good the bad the right the wrong and everything in between Alright, good song, not the best clarity on that thing. I will just completely be honest with you guys. Even when it comes to six speaker sound systems, there are much better six speaker sound systems out there. So not a whole lot of bass and the clarity could be better for being honest. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Outlander Sport in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, taking up the whole screen as well, which is always nice. And which is always is going to lead us into safety and so front side side curtain airbags do come standard there is a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks high pressure monitoring system but also coming standard will be a forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection and lane departure warning as well then if you were to go with the se or gt trim levels that is going to in addition to that add blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and lane change assist then as well and so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outlander Sport, great starting price point without a doubt for an SUV these days, 21,000. That's almost unheard of right now. Excellent four-wheel drive system, which is Mitsubishi's all-wheel control system, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. That four-wheel drive system was originally built for the Lancer Evolution for rally racing so pretty much says it all right there you got America's best warranty you got LED standard lighting all the way around you gotta love that 
So as room for improvement goes, it is kind of on the basic side when it comes to interior quality and also a basic sound system there as well. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the new Outlander Sport in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.